Joe, I know we're supposed to record footage today of other games, but I'm just going to play Vampire Survivors because I can't stop playing it. Yeah, this is the one we need to record. This is the most important game of the year. This is probably the game of the year. I know Elden Ring is coming out in four days, but you know what? This is probably the game of the year. It's Vampire Survivors here on GameSoup. My name's Ed. We're both really gung-ho on this one. My name's Joe. I love it. Uh, and the reason I love it is because it's $3. It's an, well, it's an early access, which I don't love, but it's uh, it's $3 and it's, it's tens of hours of fun. It is incredibly fun. It nails... It nails the, the gameplay loop, so let's just check it out. Yeah, there, were, there were a bunch of Twitch streamers playing this yeah, recently. this is a big um, deal. Recently, yeah, recently being a couple weeks ago, I haven't seen too much of it around lately, so I think the fad portion may have died off, but the game is still yeah. fucking great. Wow, look at all those power-ups yeah. you have. They keep putting out oh, updates that's a lot more than my five board. or six days. Yeah, they've added a bunch of stuff. There are updates every five or six days. They've added Curse recently, Revival recently, Reroll skips. Like They're getting the functionality in there, but the game, just the base game is so fun. You don't need any of that meta progression stuff for these characters. It's just that fun to play. So let's give it a shot. Yeah, I haven't played it for close to two weeks now, so my Damn, my yeah. knowledge of it is not that great. I think Mortacio is the best character. I think he is, if hands down. Is he still the best character? Yeah, I don't know. So every, every character has a, has, starts with a weapon and has a unique passive. This one is more, more proj, plus proj is too strong. It is the single most broken thing in the game. So before, before we can... Well, before you understand that, let's just see what the game looks like, shall we? Uh, what level are we gonna do? I don't know. I like the library. Let's just. Do I, li the library. I like the library. Yeah. Yeah. It's the. It's the. Only, the other two look the same. Okay. The so, music is different. So they, they changed the music. The, yeah. the most recent update. I guess it was today. They changed the music. Which is really weird because yesterday you, I. You can skip a level up. You can skip one. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's yeah. that's interesting because there's there are a lot of times where I do want to skip. Yep. When you get a lot when you get. Well, we'll explain why you might want to want to skip a level up later, because we might wind up skipping a level I'm up. I'm sure we will. This is so, the whole game, by the way. This is what you do. You get more weapons, and you just run in circles and kill guys. It's this. It's fantastic. Uh, so when I first played the game, I was actually instantly disappointed, oh, because I was, when I was oh. watching other people play the game, I yeah. thought it was a twin-stick shooter. It is not a twin-stick shooter. Right. That's, yeah, that's the thing it's that a, everybody thinks, It's an right? auto-shooter. Yeah. It's, it's, the character... Ed, Ed is not doing anything besides moving the character. Moving that the analog all stick. he's doing right now. Yeah, it's fantastic. And I, I guess you could be disappointed at that, but I actually, I was actually excited at that. I was, it only lasted, I would say about four minutes before oh, I started yeah, to understand yeah. what the game was doing. When I, when I understood that it wasn't trying, obviously it's not trying to be a twin six shooter. Yeah, it's, it's not, not trying but to, when I understood, when I understood why, why this works and what, why no one else has has either thought of it or why this hasn't taken off yet, this style of gameplay. It's very simple, but it's also skill intensive, and, and, it's, and it's unique. There's nothing and it's exactly unique. Yeah, like there's this. nothing else exactly like right. this. Um, my takeaway from it after playing it for maybe ten minutes was mm -hmm. that it's just tricking people into playing a shmup, which are really fun. Yeah. Shmups are really fun, and it's a it's a difficult genre to approach. And the way that they were previously packaged was in the arcade style of gameplay, where the original um, goal of the arcade style of gameplay was to just steal your quarters. Here we go, Wait. King Bible. Yeah, that's the one you that's want. The best weapon in the game by by like a factor of ten. It's still the Sorry. best. Sorry, I didn't. So mean what it. do we have so far? Did you take a wand? You took a wand. I took a magic wand. I had the lightning ring, which is also incredible. Garlic, which I just like. I know it's a noob trap. Uh, but King Bible just wrecks everything. King Bible basically guarantees a win. Garlic sort of guarantees a win. Especially with this character, you know? So, but they've added a lot of evolutions for weapons, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there, were, there weren't evolutions for every weapon right. in there's, the game when I, was, yeah. when I was playing the game. There still aren't, but they're, they're getting them in there. And there's new stuff. Every week there's, like, a couple new achievements, a couple new things to unlock, That's new passives, exciting. new characters. Yeah, I'll pro I'm, I'm sure I'll come back to this game. Yeah. At some point, and probably Game Soup will come back to this game either oh, yeah. when it's launched oh, yeah. or at some point during its its development. I mean, every Friday I have, since I've heard about this game, I've excitedly been waiting for the update and just immediately playing it, seeing what's new, because it's usually worth it. It's usually something awesome. So I've been playing it. I have like I have like twenty three hours in the game, which is ridiculous. By the way, if you're still watching this. We're four and a half minutes in. Just buy the game. Just go buy the game right now. Stop watching this and go no, play No, no, just stop watching oh, it. Oh, don't stop, stop watching it. Well, you, we are going to actually probably get a clear here. Probably. So you're going to see what happens at the end, which doesn't really spoil anything, I don't think. No, I there's, mean, it's, there's nothing to spoil, really. Yeah. I mean, this is this is the game. This is the spoil part, the part that's fun, you know? And we're not, we're not going to remove your fun by having fun ourselves, I think. I or think. you can just leave the video on while you play it on your second monitor. Yeah. If you have two monitors. Or put, it on, on, put the video on on your phone and play it on your PC. There you go. So this is my favorite strat, by the way, which is the garlic strat. 
The reason why garlic is so good in the early game is because it lets you just mow down enemies. Yeah, yeah you can get a lot of level ups real quick yeah. if you grab the garlic early. Not, I, yeah. I tend to not go for the garlic. Ed's, I, Ed's strategy is to go for the garlic. Yeah, I, I, I still think it's worth it uh, numerically. I still think it's worth it to get such a huge leg up in the in the first five minutes. Yeah, I, I think it. I think it also matters just the style of gameplay that you're. Yeah, you're yeah. interested in what feels right to you because different players. Some players are going to be aggressive. Some are going to be more defensive. And there's different styles of yeah, different kinds of weapons and weapon combinations that will appeal to different players and to their personalities and how they how they would um, move the character in the game. Even though all you're doing is moving a character. Yeah. There's there's a lot of variety. An exactly. Incredible amount of variety yeah. in this game. It's really the interesting. Play it. It's really interesting how how different weapons are uh, behave. Really, like a bone is only good in really really dense crowds because it just bounces off one enemy and bounces off in the opposite direction. So if there's only one guy on screen, it's not going to do anything. Yeah, it's not it's not too good. But um, magic wand's always good because it always aims to the nearest enemy. You can you can get bone to be fairly fairly decent in the yeah. in the early to mid game. It's not it's obviously not as good as garlic early game, but but I think it's way better in the end game. It's, oh yeah, of course. Oh, it's, yeah. it's it's at its peak in the end game. But yeah. if you play really aggressively with the bone and you move in between, you just make sure to be moving in between enemies. Yeah, that's uh, the you way can, to do you it. You can get it to bounce off and and it's incredible. Yeah. Put in some pretty good DPS. I think it will which bounce. Which is what I usually do. It, does it just bounce until the timer actually runs out? I think that's how it works, right? So if there's like a hundred guys, it'll bounce off a hundred guys as long as it does it yeah, in five or ten seconds. You might be right about that. Something I'm not like actually that. sure exactly when it decides to destroy, but the bone does disappear eventually. Fun little tip. I actually love the whip the most. Uh, it's probably my favorite weapon. But I like the whip a lot as yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, tip. Don't take defensive passive. They suck. And just don't get hit. Yeah, armor is not really... Yeah, you don't want to take... Yeah. Armor or um, or health, unless you need it to get the ultimate of the weapon that you're going for. Well, yeah, that's true. In that that's case, true. then you might want to take the that's defensive true. power up. The only problem is there's no listing in game. You have to look it up. I kind of yeah, forget. Yeah, I always look it up. I, yeah. I always look it up. Do you want me to pull it up? Nah, I mean, you don't have to. I always just take it as it is. Like, I just pick the power up that I like, and if I get the ultimate, I get it. If not, it doesn't yeah. bother me. Cause Which one is for the Bible? Uh, I don't know, but I always get it. So I think it's du it's either duplicator or it's not duplicator. It's not duplicator. Then it's duplicator is nothing. No, duplicator Can't... is something now. It's a lightning ring now. Oh, it is. Uh, okay. It might be spinach because that's something I always take. Like there are some things. That's what I like about this it game might... is that everybody takes. Yeah. It might be spinach. I don't. I don't know if it's spinach though. Mm. I think spinach might might be for like whip or something. Uh, I kind of forget. It's not important because I guarantee we'll find it because I've never not gotten it. <laughs> I've okay. never not okay. gotten okay. it. Okay. We'll just trust the... that then. <laughs> yeah. I've I've played. <laughs> I mean. How many hours? I've probably played at least 50 or 60 rounds of this game. Not cleared all of them, obviously, but... Yeah. Pentagram is good, but it erases your experience. Those little blue gems that drop? Yeah. You have to upgrade it for it to not take your experience, which is annoying for bosses. Yeah, I don't, I don't like Pentagram. Yeah, I don't I'm not usually a fan of it at all. It. Bosses are... I mean, th this whole thing revolves around you just escaping for 60 seconds or two minutes, and then... Yeah, you, gotta, you gotta grab all. You gotta grab all these experience points. If you yeah. guys didn't know all these blue gems, that's what that's what's giving us our level ups. In fact, this game has kind of two modes. The first mode is you just stand here and don't actually play the game, and you still get all the experience, but it's not as fun. So you're gonna get less experience though. Yeah, than if you're moving around. I like it when you move around and you and you're like you just you're all over the place because there's more to do and it's way more exciting. So Ed's build is a lot different than my really my optimal build. Yeah, I'm I'm a big axe fan. I like axe. I also like knife. Knife is insane. I, I'm not a knife fan. Mm. I don't like needing to point towards. I don't. I don't like needing mm. to aim towards the enemy in the direction that I'm moving because most of the time you want to be moving away from yeah. the enemy while shooting them, especially in the end game. So maybe early game point. you're you're rushing enemies down more. But it's actually not a good. I don't fit. like the way that the knife yeah. that the knife behaves uh, for well, a game like this. We leave one more slot for weapons. We can either take the axe or the cross. Or you can just buff this and wait and see if you get something better, something that you might want more. I'm trying to think what else there is. There's the two There's birds. I don't really want the whip. If you get the birds, you gotta get both birds. I know. You know what's cool about the birds, though? So, okay, there are two There are two attacks. One of them is a black bird, one of them is a white bird. They have an evolution where they combine, and when they combine, you free up one of your weapon slots. Yeah. Oh, I guess you knew that already. I did not know that. So, once you get the evolution for two birds, yeah, you get another weapon yeah, slot you get a and you can level weapon, that up. Which yep. is awesome. So yeah, the bird is like it, it's like a double weapon if you combine the two birds and then so it's almost like getting seven weapons yeah. worth of damage, sort of. It's beautiful. Plus you can upgrade the the evolved bird. It has its own evolution or its own upgrade tree. Which I did not realize. Yeah, so that's a lot more leveling up that you gotta do. Yeah. 
But at the end of the game, if you if you're really aggressive, if you're aggressive early and you have a lot of the meta progression upgrades unlocked, you're going to be able to. Um, uh, you're, yeah, if you have a lot of the meta progression unlocked and you're able to level up fast faster, then you'll be able to support needing to upgrade essentially eight weapons, yeah. right? Because if you get the two birds, then it turns down. You have to upgrade it again. Yeah, so essentially you're upgrading eight weapons. So you're going to need a lot more experience to support that. But if you're... Yeah, I got it down to where I was getting to max level at around maybe 25 to 26... Yeah, 25, yeah. 26, 27 minutes. That's about and where it happens. And I've seen... I've seen... Yeah, I think at, at more advanced play... Uh, I've seen people getting it like at and 20 minutes, 22 minutes. So that's pretty early. Duplicator. Again, most OP thing in the game. Yeah, it's really overpowered. It makes every weapon that you have fire more fire an extra projectile, which means six it's it's essentially six times. It's like a six times upgrade. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it upgrades every weapon that you have. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. And this character already has plus three projectiles. So just imagine doing this with an with this a different character and you only have what how many do we have? We have three six? We would have what, like four maybe? Because you gain them as you level up with yeah. this character, right? Yeah, so. he's, well, you got level 20, so you've gotten the first oh, bonus right. with him. And so then once you get one. to level 60 is the last yeah. projectile bonus that you're going to get with him. So you can throw three extra projectiles if you play as the skeleton, and that's the Which best insane. stat in the game. So By far, yeah. So yeah, the skeleton is pretty overpowered, and I guess he still is pretty overpowered according to uh, the new update. The other characters are really fun because, well, they have different base stats. They have like different speeds. Some of them have uh, big AoEs or some other gimmicks, but if you're just looking for power and you're looking to grind out coins, coins are the, the meta progression, right? So if you're just looking to grind out coins, that's how you do it. You just pick this guy. And like yeah, this my first clear was with, um, I think it was the, se I think it's the second character. Oh, yeah, I cleared yeah, yeah, a yeah, yeah. I cleared the game pretty quick. I cleared the game like, I don't know, on my, I don't know what try, but I think it was on the first night that I played it. Yeah. It wasn't. It didn't take me too long to get my first clear, and that was the hardest one. Once you start yep. getting all the, up, the meta progression upgrades, it just and gets, you unlock all the characters, it gets yeah. it gets kind of easy. That's 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 when I lost interest in the game. I'm gonna admit, yeah. Ed, Ed hasn't lost interest in the game yet. I think because the updates are interesting, and I'm I'm understanding why he hasn't lost interest. I'm, I might pick it back up, but I'll probably actually still wait a little bit until they get a little bit more, a few more upgrades. That's a good idea. Updates yeah. that, before I, I dive back in, but once once I felt that I mm. solved the game mm -hmm. and that there was no there was really no challenge left for me. But there's there's about yeah, at least at least 10 hours worth of challenge. It took me like 10 or 11 hours to basically do everything except for unlock all the meta progression. But yeah. I beat every level and every level on the harder difficulty. And so once I did that, I, I pretty much lost interest because I figured that that's I've done the hardest thing you can do in the game, so right. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop playing it. That is, but some people might just want to continue up upgrading and unlocking progression. But once I've done the hardest thing in the game, then that's I don't need to play it anymore. Yeah, you can go on to something else. If it's if I'm just playing it to play the game, if I'm playing to learn, usually I stop playing before I ever ever get to any kind of end game stuff. But this game was just too fun. I just had to keep it, playing. Yeah, yeah. The the thing with this game is for me it's hypnotic. This is this is a game that you can just play. I would play this for two hours straight if I could. I wish that. Uh, so small spoiler: if you don't want to know anything about the game, close your ears. So the game will, uh, at 30 minutes, the run ends no matter what. I wish that wasn't the case. I wish you could just keep going because I would play this for hours on end. I would never stop playing this. It's a game that is just relaxing to me. Even though I've done everything and unlocked most things, even though it's really easy. Uh, that's actually my biggest gripe so far is the balance with the game. It's way too easy. Uh, you, can, you can basically hit none of the meta progression upgrades and still do a run, you know? So some things, like Duplicator is way too powerful. Some weapons are just OP, but... The best part is that every weapon feels OP once you up upgrade it, you know? Like, they all have a really, really satisfying final evolution, which is nice. But, again, the meta progression stuff, not necessary, which is a shame, because it should be necessary in a, in a roguelike like this, you know? You should, be, you should be actively looking forward to dumping points into more HP and more damage for every run, but you don't really, it doesn't really matter. So, it's kind of, it, it's a far ways off from, from being uh, palatable to the general public, I would say, you know? But, I th yeah. Well, I think it is pretty palatable to the general because a lot of people on Twitch are playing it. Like a lot, a lot of streamers have been playing. That it. That is true. So I mean, I, okay, I, maybe I, I shouldn't think, say. I think it's got. Yeah, I think I think 
I think it's, it's got enough draw to it. Yeah, yeah. I get okay. Yeah, it's, it's got some. I guess balance issues is maybe just a, a maybe the more accurate thing. It's just it's got some things. Yeah, but it it, it's it's me. balanced to be a little bit too easy in yeah. the the long term. And the in the short when you first play the game, it it is going to seem hard, and you're probably you're not going to be able to clear it without a little bit of meta progression and a yeah. little bit of knowledge of how the game works. At a the little very bit, least. yeah. A little bit of meta progression goes a long way. I th I think I had gotten like three or four upgrades before I got my first clear, and like it's yeah, it doesn't take that long. It really doesn't. And the runs, what they start at like. Five minutes, maybe your first run, and they don't get the thirty minutes until you've been playing the game for a long time. Because there's kind of a lot to learn, and there are a lot of secrets. There are a lot of uh, tips, techniques, and, and yeah, understanding which weapons to take yeah. and which weapons and uh, other upgrades are powerful there, uh, together. There's there, you. You yeah. need for each weapon. There's a um, a specific. Uh, what, what would you call it? A side upgrade. What are the the duplicator and the candelabra? And oh, the those spinach? are just passives. Passives, yeah. yeah. The, there's a passive upgrade that goes along with each weapon, and if you get the passive upgrade uh, maxed out and you get the weapon maxed out, then you get the ultimate version of that weapon. Or do you even need to get the passive upgraded all the way? No, you just need to own it. You just need to own the passive upgrade and then max out the weapon, and you will get the ultimate version of the weapon. Like for instance, the axe gives you a, a big scythe. I love it. As, uh, oh, I think that's Candelabra actually goes with Axe. I oh, think. Yeah, so I think maybe. you're going to be able to get that one. That one's really good. I actually have been paying attention to know if the passives are meant to like be thematically linked to. I don't think they the are items. Well, because like okay, so this Light, one, well, Lightning Rod plus Duplicator kind of that makes sense because yeah, they're they're, they look the same. Right. Yeah, and this makes sense for Axe too because Axes are all about area of effect. Like you toss it over there and just you want it to be as big as possible. I guess that kind of makes sense. Uh, so back to tricking people into playing yeah. the shmup. That's what I was uh, <laughs> oh, talking yeah. about about 15 minutes ago. Right. But the um, it's getting crazy now. You can sort of tell. Yeah, it gets it gets it gets crazy. And th this is may maybe not quite yet, but this is what it feels like to play uh, a shmup. Yeah. To play uh, a shmup at a high level, at a, either a hard difficulty or maybe the end game, the, the last level of a shmup, where there's just a lot of bullets on screen and you need to um, focus. Focus heavily on what you're doing and dodge. Okay, here we're gonna say something. Uh, so this is this is a nice little crossroads part where we're at. By the way, uh, this is a new thing that was added yesterday. By the way, on the left side uh, on this list it says curse. Down there at the bottom, curse is a, a straight up increase to like enemy speed, enemy quantity, enemy health. So that's gonna be something new for you, Joe, that you haven't seen yet, which is okay, we're at twenty yeah. percent curse. So this is about twenty percent faster at nine and a half minutes than it's normally going to be. And I don't really know what to pick here. So because, that's a difficulty increase. Though. Yeah. So yeah. that's good. So we were just talking about how the game's a little bit too easy, but maybe the curse will increase the difficulty. I usually pick this for axe and bone, I guess. I guess I'll just take this. I don't know. I mean, I think there's a fair amount of strategy in this game, even though it might not be as impactful as it seems sometimes. I th sometimes you're not really making much of a decision. It just feels like you are. Yeah, I think this game's going to take a lot. A lot. A game like this takes a lot to balance, and I, yeah. think, I think they're going to find their stride. Yeah. I think they're going to. I think they're going to get it really well balanced and maybe by the time they finally get it perfectly balanced and released uh, the hype is going to have died down and no one's going to care anymore but I will care yeah I, th I think it'll, ha it'll have enough fans that are really going to appreciate oh, yeah. what they're doing also curse increases the amount of enemies so there should be 20% more enemies so you're going to get more experience which, overall too which is great early game if you just grab the yep. garlic so maybe with maybe curse plus garlic is a good strategy because not only do you get more experience you also get oh I shouldn't have touched that I'm good I'm glad that I didn't yeah. you also get more uh, coins which is the meta system upgrade right so it's you're just indirectly you're, you're just doing better you know every run you're just getting more materials so here's another boss they spawn at every I don't know every couple minutes I guess I haven't really worked out exactly how the game works underneath some of this stuff is, is obvious but some things are not like some any some bosses will drop a treasure chest some of them don't I don't know if it depends on your settings or if it's just random chance from them uh, there's also a luck stat which increases a bunch of things uh, yeah it gives you a higher chance to get a, a three to get three items in one chest here we go what's so this this is the upgraded lightning oh ring. it's the evolved lightning ring okay it is this is probably my favorite of the new weapons in the last two weeks or so projectiles s strike twice and you will see it any second so it does that I see. It strikes twice, and it also does a screen wide. Yeah, it's so much more powerful than it says on the tin, you know, because it has different behavior. Yeah. And that's kind of what, uh, well, the Bible also does that too, which is why the Bible is just so broken. Uh oh, I wasn't paying attention, but uh, if you noticed, oh, there it is. Yeah, uh, there's a strat for this level, and the strat is you can get two free passives over your cap of, what is it, six? 
Uh, you can grab the stone mask up there. You can see I'm directly above it, above me. Yeah. Uh, that gives you more coins, 10% more coins per level. And normally, if you pick that as, as a reward option, you can't get it. I think it'll disappear. But if you get all your passives first, then you grab this, then you just get it. Oh, okay. So I didn't can, know that. Yeah, and there's one on the other side of the of the level, which I think the levels are uh, infinite, but you know, a certain distance in the other direction, there's a different power-up that you can get. And that's only for this stage. So the stages are, are different enough. They have, uh, well, I don't know. I like this one the most just because it's, it's uh, enclosed, you know? I think it's much more interesting to have an enclosed space like this. Because the most stressful part is when you're trying to escape enemies and you can't do it because the farther you run away, the more enemies just spawn right in front of you. So I like this. You can kind of corral guys around. There's those two little free passives. It's really easy to get all the uh, the items, which all these items down here you can see. This one sucks It's easier all to keep track of where you are in the library because yeah. there's a wall on the bottom and yep. a wall on the top to keep you from... You only have to keep track of the west and east directions right. where the other That's two it. levels are infinitely scrolling in all directions and it's very easy to get lost. I have increases enemy speed, health, quantity, and frequency by 10%. I actually unlocked this yesterday and have not seen it yet. Skull Mania. Okay, let's try it. And what, it must go up to high, a high value, right? If every level is 10%, what will it go up to? 50% probably. Okay. I'm, look, I'm looking okay, forward to this. This, this may, we may not actually get the clear here. Yeah, Ed and I were talking about how we might, this how we're probably going to get the clear. It's probably going to be pretty easy. But now we're playing around with Curse and Skullomatic, yeah. so it we'll see been, what happens. It would have been an easy, an easy clear. I can't. Yeah, this I mean, maybe this yeah. is maybe this is the the end game here. I'm okay with that. But even this though, the the thing that kills me is is even if you get 50 percent more coins, there's still nothing to spend them on. And the things that you can spend them on don't usually make that much of a difference. They don't feel impactful. You know, which is, you know, like the weapons during a run, they feel impactful when you upgrade them. But the meta progression stuff, it's hard to notice. I don't know. I think Duplicator has to come out of the game, <laughs> honestly. I think it's too good. I think it has it, to be changed. Yeah, it should maybe, maybe you, it takes three upgrades to get it. Maybe you, your first Duplicator does nothing, and then you have to pick it two more times. Maybe. And it adds one, so that it's sort of more in line with the other the other power up so maybe you have to at least pick it twice which is still which is thematic because it's a duplicator it's two yeah. it's sort of sort of it's sort of thematic because it adds an extra thing that you have to get two of them although that's actually a problem in itself Duplicates. because just say say you had to pick it th three times really yeah. to get the benefit that's going to happen anyway it's you're it always going to gonna... happen anyway yeah cause... so it'll just make your first 5 minutes harder you yeah. know which i guess is okay but like at, by the 20 minute mark you have all the upgrades whether or not it takes you know 3 to get it or just one but maybe it should just be a lower cap on the duplicator entirely, you know? Because maybe, what is it, three extra projectiles? Two extra. Maybe two is too many. Maybe just one <laughs> for that passive. That's that's pretty reasonable, I still think. I still think. They could just make it rarer, but that would make it a little bit more like other like other roguelikes. In this yeah, game, you can sort of pick your build. You can, yeah. you can ahead of time, you can think, all right, this, this time I'm going to go for Bible, Axe, Whip, and... Um, Garlic. That's going to be my build, right? You're going. You can essentially pick at least four, usually five or six of the weapons that you want to get. Sometimes you get stuck with something you don't want, but you're going to get offered everything in a run if you last long enough. You're eventually going to get offered every kind of weapon you can get in the game. Maybe they're going to add enough weapons later on that it's going to be a lot harder for you to just Maybe. pick what your build is. But as it's balanced right now, you can just pick. You can pick what build you want going in, and it's just how long is it going to take you to get to that build? Yeah. It, it, you're going to get it at a different rate and you're not going to get the weapons in the exact order that you might want. Like if garlic is in your build, you probably want that first, but you might not get it till 10 minutes in. But you're going to yeah. get you're going to get your build. That's true. Pretty much. You almost like yeah. 90% of your build you're going to get. Sometimes you wind up with a weapon like one weapon you don't want or maybe one passive you don't want, but it's hard, but actually now that they added the skip thing, which this wasn't in the game before. Yeah, Sometimes. that's probably going to make it. That's what yeah. I was. That's what I was thinking because there's usually only one time in the game where I wind up needing to pick something that I don't want. Right. So they added it's that rare. in, so that makes it even easier to to um, to telegraph your build to decide what your build is before you even go in. This is insane. There, so they could balance it to have things be more rare. Or maybe they'll just balance it by adding a ton more weapons. Yeah. Like Enter the Gungeon, right? Every the re I think a big part of the reason why Enter the Gungeon is so addictive is because it's like opening a pack of cards every yeah. time you play the game. You don't know what you're gonna get, and it's yeah, it's a slow roll pack of cards. But and there's you, like 200. You, cards. you might wind up with a really boring yeah. setup that happens probably like one out of three games in Enter the Gungeon. You you wind up with something boring. There's yeah. no really interesting interactions. Sometimes they flop. And we can still clear the game with a boring. A boring lineup, but sometimes you get the 
Um, the uh, the gravity gun. <laughs> what is it called? The black hole gun. Black hole gun. Yeah, yeah that's that's solid, <laughs> right? So, and there's also weird combinations with that and other weapons and all kinds of different passives, and you just discover something new almost every time you play. Sometimes, like I said, you do wind up with a boring run, but it makes the interesting runs seem more interesting. And it's like that with um, uh, Slay the Spire and oh, yeah. uh, deck building oh, yeah. games that have just a ton of different abilities and different cards there. Uh, all right. At speed, health, quantity, and frequency. Wait, what's quantity and frequency? I guess frequency they spawn Probably spawn, spawn rate, yeah. So they spawn faster, and there are more of them. Yeah, just keep doing it. Yeah, I, I just maxed it out. So this, yeah, is, this might be early to max it out, but you'll actually, get a lot more experience. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't usually get this crowded until about minute like yeah. 24, yeah, 25. Yeah, this is, you're about 10 minutes ahead of schedule yeah. at this point. But also so it's a lot this harder. is going to be interesting to see how this goes. Yeah, I'm looking looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens, because it already gets... It, the game reaches a fever peak at, at 29 minutes. You kind of It kind of has this, this flow to it, and you know that that's the end because things just go sideways, always. So I'd be int I'm interested to see what's going to happen this time, if it gets even crazier. Mm. Some of these are not very good, though. Like, base speed is not good for Bible. It's not good for garlic, because they don't really have base speed. But some of these are just universally good. Like, coins, universally good, because that's your meta progression. Yeah. yeah there's a boss. Yeah. Well, she died. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, things go down. Oh, okay. Okay, so we did get the ultimate Bible. Yeah. Oh, it requires, requires spellbinder. spellbinder, which is, oh, increased duration. Skill duration. So this is the best weapon in the game to me right now. It never stops. There it is. Yeah. Okay. So that's the ultimate. Those red things circling around now, where the blue things were circling, the blue Bibles. Now we got these red icons or whatever that are circling around us. This is, yeah, pretty much the best weapon in the game. You know, I kind of like that this, the, uh, the Bible has an anti-synergy with AoE. It's one of the only things in the game yeah, I think it, that it, does. It does eliminate the it eliminates the usefulness of the garlic because most of the enemies aren't even going to make it to the garlic yeah. to take any damage from it when you have the maxed out Bible. This is a really fast ma maxed out Bible. You yeah. maxed it out at 15 minutes. And also, I mean, not just that. The, the fact that when you get AOE upgrades, the Bible moves farther away from you. I mean, sure, the circle gets bigger that it covers, but I don't think the Bibles themselves get bigger. It just moves away from you, which is usually bad, actually, because that means... You know, something can make it can penetrate that defense. And yeah, then, if something gets through the Bible defense, yeah, then you're just yeah, that's really where you need to. That's where you really need to dodge. And they are probably going to start penetrating the Bible defense. Look how fast they are. Yeah, they're really fucking fast. This is insane. I was yeah, playing this. Yeah, I, I haven't yesterday. seen this be. The, I haven't seen the game be this crazy ever. Well, I've seen more enemies on screen, obviously, because when you get to the end. But I haven't seen it this crazy yeah. at 16 minutes in. Let's say that. I've never seen this much XP and this, and this, this amount of speed and this yeah. amount of experience, especially at this point in the game. I'm kind of glad that they're, I mean, I think they're leaning into the, the speed aspect and the craziness of it. Yeah. Which is good because I don't know how much yeah, just the other sheer stuff number of enemies. The There's a kill has. counter in the game. You've killed 27,800 enemies yeah. now. I think my record before was like 39,000 or something. So yeah, I'm sure we'll beat right. that. Yeah. I'm sure we'll beat it now if we survive. Oh, you know what? Okay. So we did get five passives. I grabbed the sixth one, the free, the stone mask. And the last passive... You're taking some damage here. I am? Yeah, you just took a little oh, bit of damage. That's actually one of the few gripes I have about the game. There's so much going on. And you can turn some of the effects down. You can turn off the flashing and the damage numbers. Yeah, I turn off uh, damage numbers. Yeah, me too. They're, they're useless, by the way, which... It's, it's one of the... Yeah, okay, two gripes. The first gripe is sometimes it's hard to see what you're doing and where you are because there's a lot of effects even when you turn them off. And the second thing is damage numbers are useless to you. They don't tell you anything that you need to know. Uh, there's so many of them. I there's know, so yeah, many yeah. popping up. You can't really keep track of it, and it just gets in the way. You want to, you want to be able to see the action as clearly as possible yeah. in a game like this, like in a shmup. Oh. You don't want damage numbers in a shmup, and this is essentially yeah. what this game is. Oh, you did. You got yeah. the ultimate death spot. We well, got the ultimate, um, the ultimate axe. So we've got which three. Which is ultimates. another radial ability. So yeah. we have a lot of radial abilities. Yes, yeah, it's fantastic. This is usually pretty solid. You can you can sort of just stand around at this 28 minute mark and not die most of the time. Uh, you can see I'm actually starting to run into guys by accident and starting to take a little bit of damage. Yeah, this might be... We might lose this round. We, we might, might lose this just because uh, we took so many skulls and we have a curse. Yeah, those skulls are kind of a wild card. I mean, it's... It, we're doing fine right now, but I could see this going south in uh, yeah. about five or six minutes. So at this point in the run, the run is two-thirds over, right? My general strat is now that we have our sixth passive, I go to the left and get the seventh passive. I don't know if it's guaranteed, but I've never not seen it. So, I mean, you can see this tile set is just repeating over and over. I believe this is the spawn point, actually. This is probably where we spawned in the game. And it's like six or seven tiles to the left, and to the right are the, the two free passives. So this is when I usually make the dash to the left, 
once we get that, you got to start looking out for items, right? Because the only way to survive yeah. the last couple of minutes, uh, in my experience, is to use sponges. I think they're tomes or like mit like tablets or something. The ones that just give you this ridiculous fire attack, you know? Oh yeah. I don't know what they're called or what they're supposed to be. Also, yeah, I, yeah. I, I always grab them by mistake. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so I don't. I never have them at the yeah. end when I need them. Actually, that is one of the other things that doesn't. Uh, it has bad synergy. Is the magnet orb ability, which pulls in experience from farther away. Oh, it's gonna it's gonna grab items too. It frequently does. Oh yeah, you don't want that. Which I hate. So I yeah. kind of wish that was only experience. Yeah, because, it should only grab experience. I think yeah. that should be changed. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Maybe as a maybe as a meta upgrade, but it should just be. It should be an option no matter what. Absolutely, because it's weird. It's weird to always pick up things that you don't necessarily want. Because there, what? There's the thing that stops times, or the thing that gives you like a fire breathing ability. There's a thing. Uh, I mean, what else is there? There's something that just clears the screen. There's a bunch of different items, and you need to use them situationally. So we're max level already. Yeah, we are max level. When you get max level, it, it uh, forces you to only choose from bags of coins yeah. or floor chickens. And it's it's really not a choice. Yeah, you pretty much just always pick a bag of coins unless you need health. Yeah, unless you're about to die. Yeah. Because uh, also in the meta progression is, what, there's 0 0.5 HP per second that you can get passively, which is, I think I have, recovery there in the top left corner where the stats are 0.4. So that's enough that you never have to grab health unless you did something really dumb and walked into a boss. So most of the time you just grab the coins, and what are they worth now? They're worth... You get 25, right? Yeah. They, uh, or do you get extra? You uh, might have a... Some kind of a passive bonus. Yeah, I think it's 50% more because of the stone oh, mask okay. and some other multiplier. I'm not really sure. So you get 37 or 38, something like that? Uh, let's find out. We're, yeah, we'll find out. We will find out. You have 2310 right now. All right. So we're about to get a level up. Here we go. All right. So at 25. Oh, 2385. Oh, you're yeah. getting triple? You're Somehow. getting triple coins? Yeah. All right. I don't know how that's happening. Must be the meta progression upgrade. Yeah. You just picked up a single coin and you got three coins. So I think you got triple coins. There you go. Yeah. 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 And like that, that is satisfying, but to me, that's less important. The meta stuff is less important. It doesn't really matter how many coins you collect on a run because the run itself is fun to me. So tricking people into playing a shmup, uh, yeah. right? Yeah, right. The way that you do that in modern gaming is you create something of a Skinner box. When you make a modern game, there's it's it's almost impossible to avoid progression, aka Skinner boxing. And you you want the player to feel like they're making progression, even if they're not getting better at the game, which they always are. People are going to be if you're playing the game long enough, you're going to be getting better at the game. But that's not necessarily enough of a reward oh. for players in there's the boss in modern times when there's so many games that are. Are competing for their attention. Uh, you need, yeah, you need to have some kind of progression or something to, to keep the player playing besides their improvement at the game. There are still a few, few, few genres, um, particularly competitive genres, where that's enough of uh, an incentive, the incentive to be able to dominate and beat another player at a competitive game. But in right. a single-player game like this, that's not going to be the case. And really, yeah, having the progression. Um, the meta progression especially, uh, be, uh, be a part of the game, is going to keep players playing. And as long as the core gameplay loop is fun, which shmups are fucking fun, I've been saying that for so many years, and it's a genre that just is not, is not general, generally as well-loved as, as others. Uh, but, you know, like End of the Gungeon, that's, that's pretty much a shmup. I mean, yeah, pretty much. It's got, yeah. I mean, there's a lot more to it, though. I mean, yeah. These games definitely have the DNA of shmup, but they are they go far beyond to do new things. Yeah, you know? the thirty second game loop is is shmup, but the uh, there, there's there, there's there's more to it than just that. But really, really any any kind of game that has progression at all, which is most games, is really just it's just to keep you interested in playing through the game loop, which is already fun anyway. It's it's just to keep you. And I don't mind that. Yeah, if the base game loop isn't fun, then it doesn't matter how much progression you have. Yeah, and games that didn't have progression, if the game sucked, even if it didn't have progression, then it was a bad game and you never played it again. So I don't care that games have progression. I like yeah. progression. I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm not making no, an yeah, argument yeah. that it's bad. No, I'm, I'm not, making an argument for it, actually. Yeah, but. I get what you mean. It's, it's interesting that they, you know, this is a shmup with progression. It works. It works. I don't know. So a lot of the, a lot of the skills that you would have from playing a lot of shmups translate very well to this game. So... Uh, not to brag, I'm just I played a lot of shmups, oh, yeah. so the game was pretty easy to yeah. me to get to get through. And also because I think the game is balanced a little bit on the easier side, uh, and I think they're probably going to make it harder, which they already I are hope. with with the curse and yeah. the the skulls that you were picking up earlier. Also, they're adding a story mode, and this is only the third level. 
So I would expect it to get much, much more difficult, just not stat-wise, just based on the, the environment and the enemies that spawn. Yeah, yeah I'm sure they're going to do more with with the, the types of enemies. I hope that they don't make enemies shoot at you, though. Yeah, I don't think they will. It I don't think they will, thing. because that's not going to... Yeah, that's that's really not going to gel with the, yeah. the gameplay. I was thinking about that, and I was like, how can they make enemies that do different they things? Can't. But they can't do that, they really. Can't. The the only thing that enemies do differently is sometimes their patterns will... Bats, bats will, like, fly from the left side of the screen through to the right side. That stuff is interesting, because yeah, that actually it, requires you to do something about it. I mean, it. The, the enemies are the bullets in the game, yeah. so the enemies yeah. shouldn't... Fire bullets. Maybe there could be enemies that spawn more enemies if you don't kill them quickly. Yeah, I like think some like necromancers yeah. or you know some something thematic like that, oh, where they the, will yeah where they'll keep spawning more. Here's the other free passive. Eight uh, percent is huge. Yeah, weapon cooldown is really yeah. good. There are actually some some infinite builds you can do. Uh, there's one where you can yeah, become weapon. immortal. Sorry, what? I was just yeah I was yeah weapon cooldown is going to be really good in this case we have oh, yeah. all of our weapons we're all max out upgraded here so this is this is going to be really great and we're going to get offered those um, upgrades now so we're going to max that out real fast with every level that we get here although there is sort of a, a problem with some of these upgrades like cooldown doesn't affect uh, the Bible it doesn't affect garlic uh, it does well actually I guess it might not it doesn't affect the the oh, ultimate no. Bible it affects the regular Bible because right. the Bibles destroy. Right. That's if they point. hit enough enemies, the Bibles will destroy, and then it takes a few seconds for the Bibles to respawn. Well, they if don't you get cooldown, then the Bibles will respawn faster. They don't destroy you. based on enemies. I think it's just time. Oh, it might be time. I think, okay. I think it's just like five seconds. Okay, I didn't realize that. But yeah. regardless, you, yeah. ha you have more uptime on your Bibles. Yeah. But these Bibles, the, the ultimate Bible that we have right now, they never destroy. So it doesn't. it's not going to affect that. But if you're relying on a weapon like a whip or something that does have a pretty long cooldown? Yeah. Oh, here we go. Here's our fourth. <laughs> We've got four evolved weapons. Yeah, because you get that when you get the the tome. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, I don't. I'm not a big fan of the wand. Oh, I love the wand. The ultimate wand's pretty nice. Yeah, though. I mean, it's not very powerful. I don't usually notice it, but if you grab it as one of the first weapons in the game, it usually gives you a pretty solid first five minutes because it it aims at whatever's closest to you. you I know? tend to aim for the end game because the be yeah. beginning of the game is is not too hard, and I don't usually have trouble getting enough experience to yeah. max out my my weapons and upgrades before yeah. I get to the end of the game. So this game has. It tests similar skills that shmups test, such as bullet hurting, which is a lot of this game. You can't really tell as much from watching Ed play because he's still playing Sorry. aggressively yeah. because we have so much, um, because we have yeah such a powerful setup here. And well, also I mean, Ed, you should play Ed knows what he's doing. Even yeah, if you're you, new. Sh you should play aggressively when when you can. You start at some point in the game. You je you usually will wind up needing to play defensively and having to dodge It'll, actually dodge yeah. the enemies and move out of the way. It'll happen and, soon. Yeah. And so this game does test that, especially towards the end of the game. Bull it's called bullet hurting in shmups, where you um, you want to move as little as possible to um, direct where uh, the bullets and enemies that are charging towards you are are going to wind up, so that you can clump them together, so that you can so that they're easier to dodge. Mm. If you move really fast, they're going to spread apart. Right? I see. If you move too much the enemies or the bullets are going to spread apart and it's going to be a lot harder to dodge. But if you just move the bare minimum that you need to to dodge a set of bullets, mm -hmm. then they're going to clump together and mm -hmm. then you're going to be able to make your escape. Sometimes you're going to want to make a bigger move when there's no other way out. But you want to create that situation as few times as possible. You generally, you want, to be able to, <laughs> you want to be able to control the bullets that are being aimed at you. So you want to be in control, not have them control you. And they're going to control you if you're moving really fast. So here's where we make our moving, finals. Sorry. And you're moving too fast. Yeah, we'll yeah, we'll make our final stand here yeah. because you got a potato. That potato, a potato we're gonna grab that potato. You're gonna love Oh! It. I died! <gasps> you died! Oh, no! Holy shit! <laughs> what the fuck happened? I walked into the boss, I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. Ugh. Well, okay, just pretend I didn't die for another five minutes. Alright. So we did, we did make our final stand. It was unsuccessful. Yeah, that was but you get that was that was kind of anticlimactic, yeah, but I, know. I think we got to talk about a lot of what's in the game. Why don't we should at least we can start another round. You want, we can talk you want about to do that one? Aggression. Maybe you should play one. Well, or I think we should end the one. episode though, because we're forty minutes in. All right, we should definitely end it. I, if we did start one, we're not going to finish it. But um, yeah, I was also going to talk about dodging, dodging patterns, shapes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, in a shmup, you generally you're not going to be looking at every enemy. You could look at a game like this week. Oh my god, how are you keeping track of everything that's going on? But you're not studying every enemy and what their what their movement pattern is. They mostly just move towards you. Not always, but. They, yeah, they mostly just move towards you. And in a shmup, it's usually the bullets that are moving towards you. So you, you're not trying to look at every single bullet or every single enemy. You're just looking at the shapes of things. So if you if you're the type of person that is interest that has um, 
uh, a strong uh, visual. What's the spatial spatial relationships? If you're good at mm. spatial uh, spatial relationships, uh, then you're going to be more interested probably in a shmup or a game like this, which makes sense for me because that's that's where my um, my skills tend to lie is in spatial relationships versus um, numbers or or words. Probably words would be my, my second second strongest suit, mm. but yeah, spatial spatial relationships and yeah, just skills related to art and related to um, tracking things that are moving tend to be where my skills lie, and so that's probably why I'm into shooters and I'm into art because that's that's where my my skills tend to tend to cluster, and. So that's what, what, what I was getting to, though, was that shmups tend to test your ability to, to see shapes moving, and you just want to be where the bullets are not. So you want to you wanna concentrate on the area where the enemies and the bullets are not, and put your character in that spot. That's essentially the skill of playing a bullet hell shmup, specifically. And, yeah, you're just looking for paths to safety. So when you combine those skills, when you, compli when you combine bullet hurting and being able to recognize the shapes of the enemies and bullets where you don't want to be, then you can view a path to safety and you can herd the bullets so that they make the shape that you want them to be. Hmm. And then you create a path for yourself that you can quickly escape out of and then continue moving slowly and herding the bullets and enemies to where you want them to be. And it's, it's essentially building shapes it's almost it's i mean i never made this connection before this might be a stretch it's like it's almost like drawing <laughs> like you're you're using the enemies to draw a shape yeah. for your character to escape yeah i mean your yeah your goal is to create some sort of pattern that you can exploit or manipulate or whatever and yeah you're doing that on a on like a, a uh, an easier level here but once yeah. the game gets to the end which we we started to see when on our previous run we um you really, yeah. You start to see the shapes of the enemies more than the enemies because there's just hundreds of them on screen at at any at any given time. Damn, I am disappointed. It's probably because everything was one and a half times as fast. <laughs> I wish I hadn't walked into the boss. Oh yeah, here's here's those those yeah. bats that fly. So by. if you if you have a garlic, you can just run into yeah. those into yep. those groups of bats and you get a fuck ton of experience. Here we go. We're gonna demonstrate uh, it right no. now. Perfect it timing. It wasn't proc. Yeah, yet. it wasn't perfect. But but all right, get ready. Uh, get ready. Uh, just run into it. There okay. you go. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes so all the bats just get killed as they as they attempt to charge you. There's so actually uh, there's some sort of mathematical quirk here. Sometimes you're not actually powerful enough to walk into the guy. See, I'm I'm taking damage. Yeah. So I think you have to get two levels in garlic before you can actually start mowing down mm. bats, which we do not have access to right now. So uh, so we'll see. This guy is forty percent slower, but what's his benefit? He has uh, forty percent more area, just built in, I think. Yeah, I haven't played as his character yet. I don't think it, I don't think I have him unlocked. Once I unlock the skeleton, I don't think I unlocked anybody else. Right. I unlocked maybe five characters, six yeah. characters. I don't know. Every other character just pales in comparison to the skeleton. They all feel like gimped in a way. I think Pasquilla. I think that's my was my mm. first clear. I think she starts with the gem, the bouncing oh, gem. Oh, the rune tracer. Yeah, yeah that's a and, cool one. And it was the library. Yep. So yeah, I cleared yeah. the library, and the the bouncing gem is good. Yeah, the rune tracer is what it's technically called. Yeah. It's really good in the library because there's a lot of walls. It's kind of just like the bone, isn't it? Only it pierces it's, enemies. It's, it's just the bone, yeah. It's yeah, the, the bone, bone doesn't pierce, pierces, though. I yeah, think. that's true. Yeah, all the weapons are, obviously, they're they're based on Castlevania weapons. They, yeah, they behave yeah. similar to Castlevania weapons, except they're in a twin-stick shooter, in quotes. <laughs> Not, well, I mean, I also have to compliment the behavior of those weapons. I think there's more thought put into them than initially... There the cross is also really, really OP. Like I, I've maybe it, maybe it's not. Maybe they've nerfed it a little bit. I don't know. But I when I was playing it, the the cross is fucking fantastic. Cross is pretty good. I was, I was. That was probably the biggest surprise to me. I didn't think the cross was going to be as good as it as it is. I mean, the cross doesn't have a lot of coverage, right? It, it's not just the mechanical, like the numbers or whatever, but it depends on you know how the weapon works too. And yeah, I guess the cross is. I don't usually grab it. Yeah, you can you can make it you can make it work for you. You can mm. it's it's a weapon that you sort of have to aim, right? You sort of have to yeah. work with it. You have to keep enemies in because it it shoots at the enemy that is closest to you, and then it goes backwards. So you want to aim. You want to put your character really close to an enemy. Like for instance, maybe an enemy on the right because there's a clump to the left. Well, there was. Okay, let's just pretend there's a clump to the left. And then you want to aim it at an enemy to the right so that it goes backwards and hits the clump to the left. Well, like so you want to get close. You have to get close to the enemy, though, because yeah. so, it's going to aim at the enemy that's closest to it. It's a little bit difficult to work with. And you can see that I'm trying to aim, but clearly I can't do yeah, it. Because, early, early yeah, early game, like so, there, it looked, that looked pretty good. But <laughs> We're getting a lot of good options already. So early game, um, yeah, the cross, 
um, takes some skill to use. In late game, you really can't aim it so much, but it becomes really large and does yeah, a lot of damage. It does a ton of damage. It's 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 a really heavy damage uh, weapon, and yeah, it's gonna hit in a line behind you essentially, and it's behind where it attacks essentially. It's um, yeah, it's it's a great weapon. I've been my build. I would say would probably be Bible cross because you got to put God first. Um, <laughs> of course you do. Yeah, axe. Uh, I can't remember what else. Garlic? There's like one other one. No, definitely not garlic. Not Rune Tracer? Not Rune Tracer. The birds? No, not the birds. Although I would probably build with birds now. I didn't I didn't get too deep into birds. I've actually never combined the birds. Oh, before. birds? I know how they work. Yeah. And I can see the, the draw for them and why. And they, they add a lot of uh, extra power over the course of a run. So I think probably if I was playing the game again, if I went back in, I would go for birds for sure. Uh, because I know, yeah, they add essentially an entire extra weapon slot. Yeah. If you if you work on the birds, um, yeah. It, this game you gotta you gotta have, you don't have to, but having the wiki open for the game while you're playing is pretty useful. Mainly yeah. just mainly just so that you know how to get the ultimate weapons. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know. Maybe we should just call the episode here though, because we have been going for for long enough. I think. And I think we we are gonna be returning to this game again. And if you liked what you saw, just buy it because it's three dollars. Three dollars yeah. isn't money. You know we have a, a saying here on Game Super: three dollars isn't money. Yeah, there's no reason for you not to not to buy this game and play it right now. And with inflation, how it is, I would <laughs> say at this point maybe uh, four fifty isn't money. Let's say four fifty yeah. isn't money. I mean, Anything that costs four dollars and fifty cents, just round it up to five. There's five dollars no not because okay. five dollars okay. is not money. Who five dollars isn't money anymore. That sound, it, it just sounds worse to say though because we have a five dollar bill here in the USA. Oh yeah. And, but yeah, I think I think we have to admit that five dollars isn't money anymore. So this game's only three dollars, so it certainly is not money. So we highly recommend uh, if you liked what you saw. It's basically pick it free. Up. Yeah, Vampire Survivors. Check it out on Steam because that's what I will be doing forever. We like you. Bye. <laughs>